Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin, and there are a lot of great quilt patterns out there, but not all of them are great for quilting with men's dress shirts. And I have a lot to say about that. So let's get started. Today, I'm going to be featuring a quilt pattern that is nearly perfect for men's dress shirts. And this is kind of turning out to be a series, great quilt patterns. And so this one is the Elena quilt by Erica Jackman, whose uh, website is called Kitchen Table Quilting. And she has an Instagram by that same handle. And I have to tell you, I really love, I love this pattern and I love her patterns in general. Um, and I call her kitchen table quilting cause I follow her on Instagram. And so I don't think of her as Erica, even though that's her name, her patterns in general are great for men's dress shirts. And, uh, here's a little quick tip. If you're looking at a pattern and considering whether you want to use it with men's dress shirts, if it says fat quarter or scrap friendly, typically that will work for men's dress shirts because it doesn't require a lot of yardage. So it doesn't require a lot of fabric, which means you can mix and match with men's dress shirts and maybe other fat quarters or other scraps that you have. So that's just a little tip as we get started. So I want to give you some reasons why this is a great quilt pattern. And the first thing is it, it works in every colorway. And um, if you're not familiar with that term, colorway just means the color palette or so the range of colors that you use. And um, Kitchen Table Quilting, her patterns, a lot of times you'll get the, the whole pattern, but she will give several mock-ups or options for other colorway and every one that I've seen and I mentioned that I follow her on Instagram and so she has you know lots of people who make her quilts and then they use the hashtag just like I do the Elena quilt and if you want to see my progress this is actually a work in progress for me so if you want to see my progress on this quilt you can follow me on Instagram or you can go to hashtag the Elena quilt and you can see what everybody else is doing. But I have yet to see one that isn't just really lovely. So whether it's holiday or seasonal, so like fall colors or spring colors, um, they all seem to work. And so that to me is a really good tip off for what's a good quilt pattern. A lot of quilt patterns, I'm sure you've noticed this, they are really pretty, but only in the fabrics that the designer chose. And then you pick your own fabrics and you're like, hmm, well, it's just not as good. So, and sometimes the pattern isn't really great. It's just the color choices that the designer did. But in this case, and in most of her patterns, the pattern is really what makes it work. And so you can pretty much choose any colorway and it seems to work. So that's a really great aspect of this pattern. So speaking of colorway, you may have noticed that I have mine laid out before me. Uh, and <laughs> I chose this pattern and this colorway for a specific reason. I don't know if you remember in my previous video, this color is ridiculous. <laughs> it's so bright. The legend of the purple shirt but I bought it because it was a small shirt and I wanted to see how much fabric came out of it. And then now I have it all cut up and I was like, I need to use that shirt. Just so happens that I had two other really vibrant shirts. Uh, one is turquoise, one is blue. We'll get to that eventually. And I thought this is just a great place to do that. I ordered a mystery grab bag from Crimson Tate, and we will put the link to this online and real live fabric store in the description below. And what came to me was this just wild variety of vibrant fabrics. And I, I, I pulled it out of the bag. It was just like, oh, but woo, way out of my wheelhouse. 
which was why I did it. Um, Crimson Tape, they have a lot of CAFE facet. Sorry, I have to say, I have to like rehearse that because I said it wrong in the like very first video or maybe the second video. And I don't want to butcher this amazing designer's name. So it's K Facet. Uh, so several of his fabrics were there and they have all of these vibrants. And I'm like, I need to stretch myself, which side note, I really encourage you to do uh, because it forces you to learn and it, it, stretches your creativity and your artistic eye. So I have learned in this quilt more about using vibrance than I ever would have, have, would have had I not done that. So if you get the opportunity to kind of do a mystery grab bag or shop from a different store, um, just pick some fabrics that are outside of your wheelhouse and see what you can do with them. So that's how I ended up on this colorway. And I had a couple of other random fat quarters. I thought if there's a pattern to do it on, this is the one. So this pattern, part of the reason why I felt like it would really work with vibrance um, and also sharp fabrics is there are two fabrics per block. And you can see that even just at a glance from where you are. There is a solid and a print. And so what I decided to do was to use my very bright, very dark solid, and then a lower volume um, in the same color family as a pairing. So that was my idea, and we'll probably unpack that a little bit more. But that was my colorway. I felt like it was gonna really work with the pattern. It does. It also works with neutrals. Um, you can look at the website, her website, and see her different mock-ups, and it'll give you an idea. So that was number one. Number two is it is a block style construction. So I've done strip quilts, and I've done block quilts, and then, you know, kind of any other manner. The great thing about block quilts to me is you can work on a block or two or three and walk away from it and then come back. So as a working girl, uh, this is not my full-time gig. I know that's going to come as such a surprise to all of you. <laughs> I'm not a full-time YouTuber. Uh, I have a full-time job as a pharmacist. And so I don't have a lot of time in one big block. Quilting in general, because it's a stepwise process, you know, you'll work on something for a while and then come back to it. If you have a very elaborate pattern or strip quilts to me sometimes are a little hard to walk away from. But block quilts, you can do a block and, or you can cut all of the fabrics for one block and then leave it and come back and it's still there waiting on you and you don't have to do the mental gymnastics of trying to figure out where you were. So I really like that. Uh, I think that's an excellent, um, aspect of this pattern and I'll just true confession time. I don't do the thing that you're supposed to do, which is cut all of your fabrics and have everything ready to go. And then you can just sit down and go, you know, brr, 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 and chain piece and get it all done. I have such a high need for a sense of accomplishment. I will cut like two fabrics and then I can't stand it. I have to go sew it together to see what it's gonna look like. This pattern, if you're like that too, and you just don't have enough self-discipline to do all your cutting and then come back and do all your blocks at one time, this really works for that aspect of my, I, I mean, I would call it a shortcoming, but it works for me. And I think many of you who either work or maybe you want a side project and you wanna be able to do a little bit and walk away, this is a great pattern for that. Number three, this is an easy and forgiving pattern. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. The construction of the block is just rectangles, squares, and half square triangles. Every pattern under the sun just about has an HSD in it, but they're not really difficult to sew and then sew together. So that's a really great part. The other thing is um, in this pattern, Erica has factored in trimming for your HSTs. So you don't have to be perfectly precise 
in your cutting or sewing your HSTs because she's factored in a little wiggle room so you can trim them to the size that you need for the block. I wouldn't have known that that's a great thing except for my wonderful beloved friend, quilty mentor, soulmate friend had a, did a quilt pattern that was very elaborate and there was no trimming. Like you had to nail it, which she called criminal, <laughs> which might be a little strong, but when you're a quilter and you don't have any wiggle room, I, I can, I can feel the heat there. So there is trimming factored in, which is great. And then, um, also the blocks are not assembled to each other. There is sashing in between all of the blocks and cornerstones. And the great thing about that is you're not matching up seams between blocks. So your seams you're matching are within the block, but from block to block, there's sashing. And that just, talk about wiggle room, that just gives you a little more wiggle room and is a little bit easier to manage. So if you didn't get your block dimensions just exactly right, you can kind of fake it till you make it in the sashing. Number four is the layout is adaptable and it's also kind of trying to figure out how to word this tends toward randomness. So there are patterns I'm sure you've had, you've quilted with one where how you arrange the blocks is super de duper important, especially if you're trying to create a secondary pattern. This quilt pattern, it's on point, so you assemble it not on the square, it's on the angle. And so even as I was doing the layout and I'm looking at it as a square, then you're turning it to, to assemble it. And so what you imagined for yourself, it just has a little bit of a different bent because it's on point which is great because that gives you some room. If you don't just nail it, you can't tell. And the, you don't have to be conscious of creating a secondary pattern because of the way the blocks are like, I'm going to take just a second and point out the two different kinds of blocks. So there's a block a group and there's a block B block a has the, I call this the U or nail, but there's this bigger section in the solid with the little smaller version in a print, which this is a very, it looks probably on screen just like it's lavender, but it's actually a very, very fine plaid. And then block B is essentially the same thing in reverse. So your print is on your big, your two rectangles and your half square triangle and the solid is on the little section. And so as you do the layout and mix up your colors and mix up your solids, your big solid versus your small solid, it just creates this kind of lovely mixture. And it's not like you're having to create a windmill effect, for example, or a step triangle like you do sometimes in a log cabin. So there's just a lot of adaptability there and a lot of randomness. So that's a pro. And the final and fifth reason that I like this pattern so much, especially for men's shirts is, and I kind of alluded to, I kind of told on myself before we got here, is the sashing and cornerstones. But I, there's something very specific I wanted to say about that. And it's that in general, sashing is excellent for men's dress shirts. And I'll tell you why, of course. With men's dress shirts, they're the patterned ones in particular, there's a lot of plaid, a lot of stripe, a fair amount of polka dots, and then sometimes you can find those beautiful paisleys and florals. But what most people think of and what most people tend to find are those plaid men's shirts. And We've all seen the shirt quilts that look like shirt quilts, and some of them are lovely. A lot of them, the plaids are very different, the colorway is very different, and when they get all mixed in together, especially if they butt up against each other, 
you kind of lose some of the beauty of each fabric because they are in competition one another with one another, even though they're side by side. And sometimes you lose the pattern of the quilt because it's too visually busy is really, I guess, the, the best way to say that. So you've got a plaid and you've got a gingham and then you've got a stripe and then you've got another plaid and all of those are competing visually. And if they butt up against each other all across the quilt, your eye does not know where to land. And so I've put this purple together with this really very tiny, fine plaid, pale purple. When there's a white frame around it, you experience that separately from what's beside it. And in this case, and I'll talk about this in just a sec, because I picked some really, really vibrant colors that may not necessarily go side by side beautifully. Having that white bar, even if it was just a half an inch, gives that visual separation so you can appreciate each block, but then you get the beauty of the whole. And when you look at this final quilt, which it's not final yet, but when we look at this final quilt, you won't look at it and go, that's men's shirts. And if that's what you're going for, that's great. But I like to make quilts that are just kind of independently beautiful. And the only way you'd know that it was men's shirts is if you were looking really closely or if I pointed them out. So I think that's a benefit. Um, just having that, it's just designed really well. Erica, it's designed really well. <laughs> so those are my reasons for really thinking that this is a great quilt pattern for men's dress shirts. I did have some challenges that I largely created for myself <laughs> in this process. And so I wanna talk about that. So the first challenge that I had is I had this block and this block and this block. And you can see, my goodness, how bright those are. And aren't they pretty really up against each other? And it's probably because they're analogous on the colorway. Um, I mean, on the color, color wheel, color. I don't know what happened to that word. It just flew out of my brain. If we were looking at the color wheel, the blue goes blue to turquoise to green, and then the blue this way goes blue to purple, and then to magenta, and then to red. So I'm doing blue, and then the color on the one side of the blue, and then the color on the other side of the blue. But that's not the challenge. That's actually what makes that laying there together so beautiful. These three bright fabrics, by the way, all of this is shirt fabric, which is that not just crazy? They are cotton poly blends. And I bought them because of the color and because I needed them, uh, these two, for another project I was doing. And then of course I explained why I bought the purple. P Cotton poly blends do not hold a crease as well as 100% cotton. If you look at these blocks, if you were to look at it closely versus the ones that are all cotton, there's just a lump at the seam where the, the seam just doesn't want to fold over and press completely flat. I, I could have used spray starch. I didn't because I knew that probably it would come out in the wash, <laughs> literally. But that's not what I meant, just as I'm sewing the blocks together. Um, and because I'm not nesting seams between blocks, I wasn't as worried about it. But working with cotton poly blends, they're not as soft. They don't hold a crease as well. When you press them, there is the risk because it's not a natural fiber. You have to be careful with the heat on it or you can scorch it. Um, so that's just something to consider. So that was a little bit of a challenge, um, just, and something to consider. So again, a lot of people have asked or commented, viewers have said, you know, I can't find 100% cotton. You can use cotton poly blends, but you just have to know that going in. Also, before I move on, I picked this pattern for the vibrance because I knew I was going to do it. And I wanted to use that purple shirt up. Like I was thinking, oh, I'll use that purple shirt up and then it'll be done. Um, P.S. I only use the sleeves. And it was a small men's shirt. 
So <laughs> I still have the whole back, both yokes, and both fronts still to go. So we're going to see yet another vibrant quilt from me with purple in it at some point in the future. But also that will tell you how, I don't want to say it this way, but it's true, how little fabric you have to have to do this pattern. I used the sleeves and fat quarters for most of these. So woo -hoo, that's awesome. Okay, so now we can move on. The next challenge for me, and again, this is one of my own making, some of my low volumes were not low volume enough. And so when I went to do the layout, visually, it's like dark light, light dark, dark light, light dark, dark dark. And do you know what I mean? I hope you know what I mean. So let me show you. So here's my, this was a good example of a good use of the very dark with the lowish volume. This is actually predominantly blue in the background and it has this white plaid pattern. And when I picked it, because it was so close to that blue, I was like, it's perfect. But from a distance, the print reads darker than I anticipated. This one is a little bit better and you can probably even tell from that over, overhead shot because there's even more white in it, but it too, from a distance, thankfully the contrast is greater here. Let me put that back down and you can see it on the white. This contrast is greater than this contrast, but both of the prints are a little bit dense in color comparatively. Let me show you um, a comparison. This was one of those beautiful uh, fabrics that came from Crimson Tape, and I loved it, that magenta. Woo, so pretty. This is actually a pillowcase, this white with the matching fuchsia magenta, and it's actually pretty bright, but because there's so much white background, it reads, the contrast here is so much greater, and this reads so much lighter. If you decide to get this pattern, and I hope you do, or any pattern for that matter, when you do your low volumes, you wanna make sure your low volume is actually low volume. <laughs> My husband and I have had this joke for years, and I couldn't remember the reference, um, but we will say, I'm feeling, feeling mighty. mighty. I can't even get my voice down that low. Uh, it was from a Bugs Bunny cartoon where this like construction worker or something gets hit on the head and it just like, it doesn't knock him all the way out, but it, he's feeling mighty low. This one wasn't feeling low enough. So anyway, enough about that. When I picked my colorway, I did it exactly like I have had it laid out here on my table. And so it was purple and then magenta and pink and then kind of a um, slightly more orange pink and then even more orange and then red orange and so on and so forth. And it was lovely, is lovely, is lovely. Uh, what I did not factor in though, when you're using very brights, um, you have to think about the fact that they're not always going to be in this colorway order on the final quilt. I guess I could have, but I chose not to do that. And so what that means is this very bluey pink. <laughs> That's not a thing. Uh, this magenta that has is very strongly blue. If I put it up against, and I did do this in my final layout, this one is a little more coral. This is in the orange family. This is in the blue family. And they're a little, they just kind of, but let me show you, far worse <laughs> is this. It just, like when you look at it, especially in person, it's just, this is so yellowy orange and this is so bluey pink. They clash terribly. Now this by itself, lovely. This by itself, lovely. This right next to this is, I don't wanna say atrocious, but I wanna say atrocious. And it, they just clash. They're, they're just in the wrong color family for each other. So 
And again, this was a problem of my own making. So when I did the layout, thank God it lends toward randomness because if it hadn't and I ended up with these together, oof, it, it would have looked garish. And there would, if you saw like, or when you see the final quilt, your eye would be like, oh, that's so lovely. You know, just it, your eye knows, even if you don't know that your eye knows, your eye knows, like you would look at it and go, something's wrong about that. And it's that pairing. So that's, again, that's why the sashing is good. That's why the cornerstones are good. And that's why that random layout is really good. So thankfully, even though I did not put things in my favor, the quilt pattern put things in my favor. So that's that. Yeah, that's that little walk through the pattern and my near sabotage for myself of the pattern. <laughs> I think it's going to be really lovely. I wish I had it all put together for you, but it's such a good pattern that I wanted to go on and get it out there for you to see. Um, I'm going to lay this out on my, just one little section on my table so that you can see really how pretty it is when it comes together. I'm just going to use all of these pinks because they do look so nice together. And then my white table serves as the sashing, although I have the sashing right here. So you can imagine this would go here. And then I chose these little gray with white polka dots. I thought it would tie it in. And so this is really how I kind of did the layout. And then the, you can imagine the opposing, so that would be block A, this is block B. I did the same with the prints around the cornerstone. So we'll see how that all comes together eventually. That will probably turn up as a quilt story. <laughs> or I'll at least put the whole picture on Instagram and Facebook so you can see it for yourself. So that's that for today. Of course, I had a lot to say about it. <laughs> I appreciate you being with me. Thanks to Erica Jackman for her beautiful quilt pattern. It's the Elena quilt. Her website is Kitchen Table Quilting. And I'm Kathy Martin, and this is the Catbird Quilts. Thank you for watching.